This is the Vascularoski station. Um, this is one of the things that you'll get lots of practice doing in clinic uh, and it involves you knowing some of the regional anatomy. Uh, the application to practice is um, quite important in terms of understanding the blood flow to the lower limb. Um, quite important to use this prior to doing maybe any invasive procedures. Um, a lot of the contraindications for some of the procedures are limited vascular uh, supply. This will provide you a baseline assessment um, and if you found that there were some uh, differences here that were uh, not favourable, we perhaps might go on and use some of the more complex equipment that we have here um, to back up your findings. So one of the pieces of kit that you're going to need is actually a um, uh, Huntley Doplex. This is a, an, an MD2 unit which uh, comprises of two components, one of which is this, which is the probe. Probes are really expensive, probably about um, £300 each. Uh, most of the probes we have in the unit are 8 megahertz probes. If you want to check, it's written on the underside of the probe there. And when it's plugged into the unit, it will come up on the display as being an 8 megahertz probe. An 8 megahertz probe is suitable for digital um, um, foot, foot pulses um, and superficial pulses. Um, if you actually get into doing toe pressures, um, digital pulses probably need a, a 10 megahertz probe. Uh, and if you're looking at more deep vessels, such as maybe femoral vessels and popliteal vessels, you may need a specialized probe, such as a 5 megahertz probe. Essentially, the, the lower the frequency, the deeper the penetration. Um, but the higher the frequency, the more um, accurate and detailed the, the sounds that, that it produces are going to be. Um, so this is the handset. Um, and essentially what you want to do is actually remove the uh, probe from the handset before turning it on. You can get some nasty feedback if you get the probe too close to the, um, uh, the actual uh, thing that produces the sound here. Um, there are several buttons. The on off button is right on the front and when you turn that on the, the display will light up and you'll see that there's a little probe um, on the display here um, and that tells you which direction the flow is in, in relationship to the probe. You will see arrows that are showing up on here. Um, if I tap the end of the probe you'll uh, actually, you need to turn it up first. So there is a volume um, at the side. Um, and when I, it can show directional flow, but you might have to have it actually on, on the foot to do that. On the side as well, there are a few um, uh, little buttons as well. Um, essentially, there's a gain mode, which is the bottom one. And as you press that, you'll actually see on the digital display three lines um, uh, appearing. Um, when the three lines are on, that's at its most sensitive. So it's quite relevant if you are actually plugging into... Um, uh, a printer. There's a little um, PC here where you can plug into a printer and if you increase the gain the, the graph gets larger and smaller um, in terms of the um, uh, y-axis um, uh, size of the size of the uh, printout. Once you're quite confident using one of these, there are some additional pieces of equipment. This uh, is um, also a Doppler, uh, but this will give you a graphic display. Um, it'll give you a waveform printout, and uh, it is capable of doing things like spectral analysis, and checking for um, blood velocities and, uh, and things like that. Also, this will take simultaneous toe and arm pressures. Um, and an ankle brachial pressure index is something that you'd be expected to do as your second year OSCE, which is kind of a follow-up to this first year OSCE. So there is more complex equipment. Another thing to mention is that there are headphones that are available for these. Not only does that help if there's a lot of background noise, um, but it also means that you get uh, forward flow in one channel and reverse flow in the other channel. 
Just a short revision of the anatomy in the area. There are two pulses on each foot that we expect you to be able to find and uh, report on. Um, one is the dorsalis pedis, which you can see just running in this channel here. It's between the first and second rays. There can be a little bit of variable anatomy with this in terms of its depth of penetration and maybe uh, uh, medial and lateral um, displacement of the vessel. But essentially you're going to be putting your three fingers over the top of the foot uh, to palpate that. Um, when you feel with three fingers as well you can sometimes have an appreciation for that sort of waveform that runs, uh, runs underneath your fingers. Once you've been able to palpate it you should then be able to use the uh, Doppler probe. The other pulse is behind the medial malleolus um, and it's actually one centimeter behind the most distal posterior point of that palpable bone. Um, and if you feel it just back here with three fingers, you should be able to uh, palpate that quite, quite readily. So like all uh, OSCEs, uh, you're going to have um, uh, a patient, which is usually one of the second years who's volunteered for this. Um, um, but do treat them like a patient, do introduce yourself, explain what you're going to be doing um, to them like you would with, with a normal patient. This is part of the assessment really. Um, um, and then what you're going to, going to be doing is you're going to be looking for the pulses. So you've got four pulses to find, dorsalis pedis on both feet and posterior um, tibial pulse um, be on both feet as well. So if we find this medial malleolus, the bony bit, the most distal point on it, feel for that bone, and then you're looking at about a centimetre behind there, and that should be exactly where you should be able to feel it. And uh, essentially using three fingers and tucking them up and inside um, uh, to palpate that. You want to vary your pressure. Uh, Far too hard and you could occlude this, you know, if you press more than 120 millimetres of mercury, you'll actually occlude the pulse, uh, which you wouldn't want. So you're varying your pressure from light to hard until you, until you can palpate that quite well. Then you've got to use coupling jelly. With all ultrasound, it's got to pass through and penetrate into the tissues. Ultrasound um, energy or waves won't pass through air at all. It's just blocked by air. So we need something to be able to transmit that into the tissues. So we use some coupling jelly, and I usually say about a pea size amount. So obviously it depends whether you've got garden peas or uh, processed peas or, or whatever, but um, not too much. Usually there's loads of this around uh, when you're uh, doing your OSCEs. Now what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to get the probe pointing in the direction of the blood flow. So the angle of the probe you're expecting to be at about 45 degrees to the actual vessel, not necessarily to the skin, it's more to the more to the actual vessel that you want 45 degrees and then you can turn on your device and um, generally you want to have the volume up full um, and then you're just going to be finding that audible signal you want to get the best signal that you can and you may well just be able to see the multi-directional flow on the indicator. You can hear three sounds here. You've got to listen very carefully. You've got one sound and then two sounds that follow quite closely. So it's whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. You're really not wanting to press on too hard at all. You don't need any pressure on the skin uh, to be able to get this, this sound produced. To comment on what you can hear, there are three things which you're actually listening for. One is actually that it's multiphasic, that you get those three sounds. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. This is triphasic sound, which is a healthy sound. The other thing is regularity, you're expecting it to be a regular beat, 
which is constant, not maybe missing a beat and then doing two quick beats together. Um, that would be what we call an irregular heart rate, which can be the sign of maybe um, some heart defects. And the other thing that we're interested in is the pulse rate. So this is a normal pulse rate. You're expecting probably about 60 to 70 beats per minute, um, depending on the patient and the patient's fitness levels. Um, obviously, if you've got a, a, an elderly patient, you're not expecting them to have a very slow heart rate, like Miguel Injury, um, who's um, got physiological heart enlargement. Um, and it might be relevant if you've got either a bradycardia, which is too slow, or a tachycardia if it's too fast. Normal pulses uh, are like this one. This is a triphasic pulse, which you'd expect to find in a young, healthy person. As you get older, your elasticity of the vessels gets a little bit less, and you may lose that very final sound. And that's what we class as being biphasic, not necessarily a, an indication of pathology. Um, but if you just get a single sound, sort of a single whooshing like a whoosh, then this will be indicative of maybe a, a proximal stenosis or a blockage, which would require further investigation. In the, in the lower limb below the knee, the venous system um, runs as venae comitantes, so you have veins which are running around either side of the artery in the same um, vascular sheath, which helps with venous return. And if you move slightly, you may hear venous sounds. Often you've got venous sounds in the background, and it sounds a little bit like wind sort of blowing up a chimney if you get on a, on a vein that's working. It's sort of like a whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Now, obviously, the, um, it's in, in phase with respiration. And if we're on a vein, if we squeeze the um, venous uh, pump, uh, you'll activate that, that, that venous blood flow. So that's, uh, you can hear the blood being squeezed towards the heart. It takes a, takes a little bit of time just for that venous blood to fill up again. And then as we squeeze, you can hear that blood return. Um, actual venous assessment isn't part of this OSCE. Um, but it is possible to listen for, for venous reflux on a dependent limb uh, by doing um, uh, venous uh, foot or calf squeezing like this. So the other pulse is the dorsalis pedis. It is possible to move jelly around and uh, from one place to another. Um, uh, cost effectiveness and uh, not wasting anything is, is quite useful so once you've got the jelly in place you've uh, palpated the pulse first to make sure that you can feel it um, usually I find sort of over the over the high to the arch the the main part of the arch is the best place to feel you can feel it more distally but the pulse does dive down a bit deeper here and um, uh, the opportunity to press it actually against the bone at the peak of the arch is probably the best. This vessel, the dorsalis pedis, is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery. It's just renamed as it passes underneath this uh, extensor retinacula which holds all these structures down. Um, so this time we're looking at the probe to be at about 45 degrees to the blood flow. Um, um, uh, and in the direction, pointing it upwards. You just want to get the best sound available that you can once you get it. It's little subtle movements can change the, the sound that you get. So you're just looking to see the strongest sound that you can actually possibly get. Here we can hear a a normal multiphasic sound that's being produced. 
So the keys to success for this station are um, treating your uh, patient like a patient, introducing and explaining what you're going to do, um, knowing the anatomy accurately of both the vessels on both feet and uh, being able to find um, the um, dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibia. Um, getting the probe at the right angle and um, holding the probe correctly uh, and not pressing too hard because if you press too hard you're really just lying that probe on the skin and uh, trying to find that vessel. Um, the objective is to just simply get a, an audible sound and, and comment accurately on it and just remembering that there are three things that you're expected to comment on. One is the uh, pulse rate um, one is the um, uh, regularity of that pulse and the third one is the actual uh, phasic quality. Is it multiphasic, triphasic, biphasic or monophasic? So what could go wrong with this station? There, there, there isn't that much really, but um, obviously just making sure that the volume's up correctly, making sure that it's turned on and the, uh, the probe is engaged fully. Um, if there are any technical problems with the equipment, such as the battery running low, then we'll obviously change a battery for you. Uh, we'll have a spare battery ready on the day. Um, and in the event of an actual technical malfunction, you will be given an opportunity to uh, uh, to, to do that station again. Um, also, making sure that you don't press on too hard. You could occlude the pulse potentially. This isn't much of a problem for sort of the healthy people that you're likely to be seeing on this station, but it is a real problem in patients who've got maybe a low uh, blood pressure. So pressing on in a patient with vascular disease may be just enough to occlude that, that vessel and, and and not get a sound um, also just knowing your anatomy and being a little bit patient with it and just trying to find um, obviously palpating accurately first is really useful uh, and then and then looking for where you're going and it may be just being aware that slight adjustments and slight angle changes can make quite a difference to the, to the quality of sound that you can get on this station